Good day, my lovely people. Welcome here again to my channel, Eleanor's Chronicles, and my name is Eleanor. Today's topic is one that I dreaded doing, and for days just thinking about it crippled me because for me, rape is personal. It is a touchy subject for me. It gets me triggered, even just saying rape. And the reason that I want to talk about it today is because of this gauge of women laying false rape charges and crying rape like it's something to, like it's a joke, like it's nothing. Which means that we have a serious problem because it means that the nation does not know what rape is because rape is not sex. You know, I was watching Ziggy's video, which she did yesterday, and she tried her level best to explain. And I can see on her face and in her body manner that she can't find words for it. It's somewhere deep inside her, but she can't she can't bring it out in words to to lay it out so that people understand the gravity of even just the word rape. She battled for the words and she could find none. I'm going to try my level best to explain to these witches, these daughters of Satan, what actually rape is, so that they know what it is that they are attracting to themselves, so that they know Ugut, what graves they are subjecting women who are yet to be raped, who are going to say we are being raped, help, and no one is going to believe. They're going to have to die in isolation simply because daughter of a witch decided it's a subject to be played with. When, when somebody rapes you, it's not so much the violation of your body that even matters. Most of the time, that does not even feature neither to you nor to him. Because for him, it's about him having power over you and stripping you of your power. For you, is the invasion of your space. Somebody invaded your space. Somebody degraded you to lower than a thing. Somebody took away your humanity. Somebody opened your chest and touched your spirit without your permission. Somebody dug a hole with no bottom and threw you in there. And you kept on falling yet you can't touch the bottom.
And just when you're saying it's over, you're going to get help. You get to the police station. They open that grave that you were thrown in. Instead of them extending a hand and helping you out of that hole, they ask you how the view is in there. You become an animal in the zoo for the community and your peers. Even the therapist are in it just for the lines. So how did that make you feel? You have to confront your fears like she can even know what my fear is. Can you still smell him? It gets better with that. How do you know? Were you there? Did you share the experience with me? Do you know whether it will get better or not? Then your family comes in and they say she should have died. She's lying, who can rape her? That well-mannered boy from that well of family. She's lying from your very own flesh and blood. And Jews come on board, try to help you. But they are no match against your own blood. For your blood says you are useless, you are troublesome, you are into your blood. You are no good. How do they argue with that? After all, your blood knows you better than most. At least they should. So why can't they believe your blood? You survive that. Then out comes Ule Ratom Loi. To give people a reason to say we told you these people are lying hmm? you see you see them you see when we're telling you that they're out here trying to ruin people's futures thank you very much